My name is Dunny Dancer, um, from New York, Manhattan. Um, I started traveling uh, when I was 15, so that was around 1975. Way different then, uh, way different. It was, you could go cross country without too much worry or concern. I mean, there were predators and such back then, but it wasn't quite as prevalent, you know, as it is today. Uh, I think I was, I was in my mid 40s. Well, I had been married once in my 20s, in the mid 20s, and was settled at that point, but really wasn't ready for that whole settled thing. Um, in my 40s, I started noticing it was like, hey, you know, I'm getting old, you know, I mean, when I start thinking about settling in more, that kind of thing. Um, there were certain resources available. You know, if I chose to wait anywhere from just couldn't see being in a town or one town for that long, you know, with the possibilities and stuff. And, uh, and when I did get into a place, it seemed like it was more the same people that I was dealing with outside, I had to deal with inside, you know, only we were in more of a, a closed in environment. So there was no getting away from somebody you didn't really care to be with, you know, I mean, for whatever reason. Um, and then it, as it progressed, as I got older and stuff, I started noticing the programs that were there were no longer really functioning. I mean, they were still had people working and still doing stuff, but there was no list anymore. You know, everything had been closed and, and there was the attitude towards homelessness had changed, you know, the generations had changed. Um, yeah, and I started realizing it's like, no, I mean, everywhere I went, we were considered illegal, you know, because we were homeless, you know, I mean, so we were automatically criminals just for wearing a backpack or, or sleeping on the sidewalk, you know, and I didn't feel that was right. I mean, this is America, you know, I mean, I'm not homeless because I'm in America and that's my home, you know, maybe houseless, you know, but I don't really know that I want a house, you know. Uh, I just want to know that I can go off somewhere and, and slip into a little patch of woods, catch some Z's and take off in the morning. You know, I don't, I, I don't trash places. I don't leave anything behind. You know, it's, it's just, you know, that's just my personal way. I mean, I know a lot of people have issue with that, you know, and uh, I have issue with that. I don't like to see coming to a camp and know that somebody's been there because there's just nothing but trash around, you know. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's kind of how I, I decided you know, enough is enough, you know, I'm a human being, you know, uh, you, all human beings need sleep, they need sleep, they need food, they need water, you know, these are necessities, they're not just rights, you know, and for someone to say that that's illegal, you know, because I, it, to me that's just not right, and if that's the way it is in America, then we're not a democracy, you know, we're a police state, you know, and I want people to recognize that. Back, back in, oh, I guess it was, uh, there was a uh, women's advocacy for medical marijuana. Uh, they had a, uh, uh, the DEA come in and, and bust one of their, their growers. Now, well documented, had all this paperwork and all, busted him, took everything, right? They took it to court and won. You know, the city of San Francisco had to give a pretty big stipends and uh, they were also under a, uh, uh, a condition they couldn't support or give information to DEA you know it was like no no this is city thing this is you know city state thing they have nothing to do with it and they need to stay out of it you know uh, they agreed and it was all handled uh, <clears throat> problem is is that it created a, a large uh, crystal meth problem and that tends to create a lot of chaos, you know, and stuff. And even, even amongst the street people, it was like, nobody wants that, you know, nobody wants that in their community. And I, I agree with them on that. Um, thing is, it got to where you had like three 
of police enforcement. You know, uh, you had hospitality, which was supposed to be to go help tourists, you know, find this, find that, you know, blah, blah, blah. But they were basically, you know, they would be on the phone going like, so-and-so is doing this, blah, 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 which would send the next arm of the enforcement, which was uh, first alert, uh, first alarm. It was a private security force that the city had, per had rented, you know, or hired uh, to enforce the law there. They would show up, and if, they, if it was illegal enough, they could actually put you in cuffs or taser you or whatever it took, you know. Uh, most of the time, it was just move along, you know, or if it was really bad, they would hold you and a, and a regular police would come. Um, and yeah, it got to a point, you know, I mean, you, you couldn't smoke here, you couldn't smoke there. I mean, eat cigarettes, you know, I mean, I, I'm cool with some of that. I, I do smoke myself. I'm cool with some of that because... There are the people, you know, and, and I respect that. You know, I respect their wishes too to, to, to be free of that, you know, when they walk down the street. Uh, but sometimes they were getting real nitpicky about it, you know, literally breaking out a ruler, a yard, you know, a yard tape to make sure that they were so many feet away from whatever they were supposed to be away from, you know. Um, couldn't sit on the park bench for more than 15 minutes at a time. Um, there was only so many areas where a person could could spange, um, and those were only for like so much at a time, and you had to move, you know, blah blah. blah. It, it it was ridiculous, because it really wasn't doing the problem. The the, the the what I call the the meth heads, you know, were still out there, still causing, getting in people's faces, getting you know aggressive, you know, and all that. Their jail was full. They, they just they just added like 150 beds, right? And they were already full, you know. So all tickets and the tickets were basically becoming tissue paper because they were worth about that much, you know. Nobody cared that they were getting a ticket, you know. What I mean, because they had no credit anyway, you know, <laughs> you know? And, and weren't really worried about that. And, what I've noticed, I mean, I've been out here for a long time, and what I've noticed is that what started out as a condition uh, has become a culture. I mean, there is an honest culture here. They have their own language. Uh, they have their own economy, you know. Uh, you know, they have their own rules and regulations, you know. I mean, it, it's a separate individual culture, you know, and... For better or for worse, you know, people are going to have to focus and deal with that. You know, I mean, realize it's a reality. It's not going to just go away. It's already too far spread. You know, it's everywhere. Everywhere you go and everywhere you go, it's illegal to be homeless. You know, and it's corporate thinking, putting everything in a box. You know, it's got to fit, you know, or else it doesn't belong. You know, and that's the problem. It's, you, you stick people in a box, it doesn't fit because it's life. You know, life, life is not in a box, you know, life will bust through, through asphalt, you know, it'll bust through these buildings, you know, I mean, there's nothing that life won't take over, you know, if you give it this little chance, you know. Um, and yeah, again, that was why I came down to it. People just have to admit that there's more than one situation, you know, you talk about a drug problem, okay, yeah, which drug problem, you know, which one? because each one is a unique and individual problem. You know, uh, the homeless problem. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of people who are homeless. M quite a few, not by choice, you know? Quite a few would be more than happy to, to be in a shelter in a place where they could just close the door to get away from the world for a while. Others, they don't want that. Don't want it, you know? Uh, we just as soon, you, you know, you can do whatever you want with it, but don't give it to me. You know, and people are gonna have to deal with that, you know, because they're not going anywhere. I wish more respect for both sides, from both sides. Um, you know, I, I party. You know, I don't know. In fact, I don't really know anybody that doesn't. You know, but I, I try to do it in a way of like, if I know I just really want to get, you know, out of there. You know, I go somewhere away. You know, I I, I don't want to be crowded by a bunch of people that I don't know and all that noises that I don't like you know I mean I'm gonna go somewhere off into you know 
some park somewhere way out, you know, and do it, you know, just sit there and do it, you know, and then when I'm more in my own wear, you know, yeah, then I come back. It's the disrespect that I have a problem with, you know, I mean, yelling and screaming for no reason and just to make noise, you know, I find it unnecessary, you know, and, and it does, it, it, it makes people nervous, you know, they become defensive because they're afraid someone's going to come up and just attack them for no reason or steal what they have, you know, things like that. Yeah. Uh, and, and as far as other people here, you know, just yeah. patience, you know, I mean, that, that thing of like, you have to walk in a person's shoes in order to really know wh who they are, you know, <clears throat> and it's kind of the same thing here. It's like, there has to be a, an, a, an understanding. You know, just because you've worked all your life and, and, and done, you know, things by the rules, yeah, you've made it. More power to you, way happy for you, you know? But others aren't like that, you know? We're individuals, we're, we're unique, you know? <clears throat> and because of, that's the problem, because of that. No boxes, you know, boxes don't work, okay? They might work in the, in the corporate world, they don't work in the real world, you know? I mean, and, and the sooner we realize that, maybe we might be able to a lot more problems than just this. Yeah, even the whole corporate enterprise. Now, the basic concept of that is awesome, you know? I can go and I can create something. I can make something that's beautiful. And, and, and I can do that many times. And I can turn around and trade or, or sell or whatever, you, you know, however you want to term it with someone else for something that I need. You know, and, or want, you know, and they're going to be happy. I'm going to be happy. It's all good, you know, but, you know, just that, that whole attitude that it has to be done a certain way, you know, that's just not possible. It, it, even if it were, were, I don't think anybody would really want that because then we would, we would stop being individuals. We would start being drones. I mean, drones, that's it. And I'm not a drone to be a drone. You know, I don't fit in anybody's box. <laughs> you know, there are only really two emotions that we have, and that's love and fear. You know, if we love something, we know that it's there for us. You know, we know that it's, even if it's not, you know, we know that it's out there. You know, and and it gives us that warm feeling. You know, yeah, okay. You know, and I can carry on. You know, um, fear is is we don't know. See, that's the thing. We don't know. And our, 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 our animal mind, that little medulla oblongata back there starts tingling to go like animal instinct, fight or flight, you know? That's the key, you know? That's the key. We're not very far from being animals, you know? I mean, we, we may call it civilized, but mm, I beg to differ, you know? you know? And that's the point. We need to realize what's real. You know? say, look, I know it may not be comfortable for everybody, you know, nothing really is. I mean, even this is not comfortable. This is not where, where I want to be. I don't want to be in the middle of downtown courthouse plaza, you know. I want to be off somewhere where there's trees and it's quiet, you know. <laughs> but I want to be able to do that, you know, and not be considered a criminal for it. I think the main thing is for all Everybody, all my brothers and sisters, all the people out there in, in what I call homie land, you know, just be patient with each other. You know, a little bit, a little bit will go a long way. A little bit of civility, you know, the old school, like, good morning, you know, how are you doing? You know, those little things, man, really lighten people's days. You know, it, it sounds corny, it sounds cliche, but it's true. <laughs> it's true, it works, you know, I mean, and if we could just, you know, everybody, I mean, everybody, just take that. I, stop. Take a deep breath. Then say hello to somebody you don't know. You know? That's it. If you can do that, we'd have half this problem licked because we understand we're not different. We're, we are, and we're unique, but we're from the same being, we're the same species, you know? I mean, let's at least treat each other like we're from the same species. You know, that's all I'm saying, you know? Oh.